Welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at Community Report 83 for Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. This was published on the 18th of September 2023. Now, this is a pretty short report. It consists of two sections. First section, the devs announced that they have got themselves a publisher, which is quite understandable because the game is running up to full release, possibly, I think it was projected for the end of this year. And then a second one, which is more interesting to actual game players. And if you are really into realistic mode, it is a very significant uh, piece of information. But I'll save that until we got through the first section. So let's just get straight in. It says, greetings, dear comrades of the Soviet Republic and all the fans of our game. As we continue on the winding path of game development, we sometimes face unexpected turns that challenge us. Yet it also fills us with excitement. Today we have some groundbreaking update for what we think you're going to love. Now I'm going to skip over the, the picture and jump straight down to the next paragraphs. There's the biggest news we have is that something happened which nobody thought would never happen. We signed a contract with a publisher. The publisher is Hooded Horse, is friendly towards indie developers and specializes in deep strategy and tactical games. You might wonder why we made this decision, but there, there are several reasons. If I remember correctly, Hooded Horse isn't one of the big um, publishers but as, as in the paragraph says, they do tend to specialise in indie games and smaller games. The two games that come to mind, I think they publish, is Manor Lords and Terror and Victor. But there's several other titles which don't come to mind at the moment. So they probably are a good publisher for, for Workers and Resources Soviet Republic because the original developers won't get lost in the big name announcements. So just moving down to the next paragraph, it says, first and foremost, we hope we will bring our game to a larger audience. The game certainly deserves it. And honestly, we don't have the resources to conduct effective market campaigns, negotiation prom promotions on Steam, and provide stronger support for our Eastern markets such as Japan and China. And we want in to focus on primarily on development. We believe we've found a strong partner in Hooded Horse that suits our needs. Importantly, there's nothing will change in our approach. We continue with our usual development and our overall strategy for developing and selling the game will remain the same. We hope that our player community will not only notice improvements without any negative differences. I think this final paragraph does reflect the the reality of if you're into publishing games, especially if you're a small um, development team. The costs involved in worldwide distribution, especially, like they say, Eastern markets and, and just promoting, would require a, a fairly big team, which will probably end, could end up bigger than the actual development team. So it's quite understandable that they have gone with a publisher. And I, and I do really hope that it works out really well, because I think Workers and Resources deserves to have a wider audience because, well, it's a great game. Anyway, let's just move down to the next paragraph. So again, I'm just going to skip the pictures because this is the big announcement and I think it's going to be a little bit of a game changer. It says, shifting gears back to what's at the core of our endeavours, game development. We have a landmark update to share today and we understand that the frustrations you have had with road construction with where pathways cross roads and waypoints break your roads up into annoying small segments. That's about to change, yes. Uh, now, I'll be completely honest, it, it, I actually designed my cities around this problem because it is quite a major problem. And I'm just going to read the next paragraph, and then we'll go back and look at some pictures. We implemented changes that will make the road construction of a road, I think that's meant to be run from junction to junction, connected pathways and waypoints, and we will not divide the construction site into smaller segments anymore. This will improve the construction process, allow you to construct road faster. Also, the pathways crossing the road will remain functional. This means that less disruption for walking citizens, even though they may not be able to use the road under construction itself. Now, that is very significant. I think if we go up, well, I'll just show you the top picture. This is just a picture of a, a paver, and it's actually an early paver where it's actually a truck. Um, which is quite um, interesting, actually, because I think I'm actually using that in my current five-point series. Then if we go down to the next picture in here, what you'll see is that where the road has been broken up a little bit, but in the current release, see where these footpaths come in. If You, you can see that the road is actually broken up into subsections here, 
and what what are they are obviously proposing is that it was that they, this is all treated as one section through here rather than all the little subsections in fact this is an upgrade to a uh, an illuminated road in asphalt and as i say to do this um in the current update you'd have to do the the small section to the first footpath then a little section there then a little section there and it'd be it's really is really time consuming and that's the reason why when I, I tend to design cities i tend to like to try and get all the main roads in first before i actually start subdividing it and putting in footpaths and again here's another example of of the road here and what you can see is that we've got quite a long section of road with a, and a single truck coming down the center and we got one well one two three four five footpaths coming in and i think this will make a major dif uh, a difference especially with upgrading because again one of the dilemmas when when i'm planning cities and i'm sure many of you guys have the same problem is that you want to start with gravel especially in the, your first city but then comes the problem later on where you've got to upgrade those roads to um, asphalt and by then you've put the pathways in and people are crossing the roads because that's the nature and I, I'm, I tend I must admit I tend to run pathways parallel with the road to so that when the time comes to upgrade it doesn't disrupt the way things are um, the way things are actually operating so this will be quite a major um, jump forward just moving down to the next section which actually does talk about upgrades it says this change will all apply to road upgrades too and you'll be able to upgrade roads now without them being fragmented into small segments and but not only that we've improved the tool for road placement you can use it instead of batch upgrade upgrade to assign multiple roads divided by junctions whilst holding the button just remember the junction will still divide the road construction into segments but it also means that pathway upgrades will remain as they are divided solely by junctions 100 percent sure what that actually means i think what they're implying is that you can allocate a road i think this is not that option there i think that's the next picture but again this shows the different ways that a road can be broken up in there because of course um waypoints can affect the road i think even traffic signs here can split a road if, if possible so the ability to build a road all the way through like that is is going to make a very big difference yeah I and mean, this is actually upgrading actually you can see here with the, the footpaths there and then i think this is the picture with yeah it looks like very much like the tool so there must be there will be an option to do it so you can say right i'm now going to upgrade that entire section there you can see and you can see in the right here with the little icons is indicating that this is an upgrade to an illuminated um asphalt road so it looks like it's all being done in one go i think again that would be very useful as because of course what you don't want to do is uh, go through because um, I think again, I think this would be very useful because one of the things that annoys me is having to do all these little sections as uh, individual jobs when you're upgrading. So the ability to just go around and say, right, I want all this upgraded all the way through would be um, quite significant, although it's still split up once you take the finger off the button into between the different road junctions. So this would be one, two, three, four separate junctions because I presume the road junctions would still remain Think that's the way it works just flip back to this picture yeah so it's running between road junctions so it's ignoring footpaths so again it's something you'd have to bear in mind if you were putting lots and lots of road connections in that they would probably still stand and then what we'll do is just get down to the final paragraph it says we trust these adjustments will make your in-game construction experience far more enjoyable and we're optimistic that our new partnership with Hooded Horse will take the game to outreach to unprecedented heights. While we excel at coding and development, we acknowledge the value of expert marketing and what our new alliance of promises to deliver. That's all we have for today's report, but life isn't all the pixels and code. Remember to enjoy the other facets of life and keep an eye out for the next update. So that's it, guys um really interested in the changes to road construction i think it's going to make a very big difference it's certainly going to change the way that i design my cities especially with respect to an early decision whether to 
gravel and lever town gravel or whether to um build the asphalt roads first so that is going to be quite significant uh, so this is where i'm going to leave it hope you enjoyed the video hope you found it interesting any comments opinions feel free to chuck it in the video description and we'll have a chat but until next time whatever you do enjoy your gaming